Good morning. Today is the Lord's Day, or the Sabbath Day, July 25th, in the year 2020. And this morning, or this afternoon, wherever you're located, is going to be the final part of the series on why the Law of Moses is still valid today. And this is part five. The blessings for remaining obedient and the curses for disobedience. Do you have your Bibles? I'd like you to open up to Exodus chapter 15 and move down to verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. And also Leviticus chapter 26, verse 3. If ye walk in my statutes, and keep my commandments, and do them. We come now to the part of the series that everyone loves to hear about. Especially when they go to church, they love to hear about all the good things that God has to give to his people. In this instance, it'll be the blessings for remaining obedient to God's commandments. I've touched upon the second table of the law in the first part of this series on the Ten Commandments. And these six commandments in that second table are relatively self-explanatory. Obey your parents. And this includes those that are appointed over you in your adult life, teachers, and so on and so forth. Do not commit murder. Do not commit adultery, which we showed earlier in its fullness, which includes idolatry. Do not steal, do not lie, and do not covet your neighbor's things. And again, all these are understood, even by the very young. And therefore, I decided to keep the focus of the series, that is the last four messages, including this one, on the first table of the law, and what it means to love God. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ said that there are two commandments. The first commandment, the greatest commandment, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And the second is like unto that, is to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, with the first four commandments, they are woefully neglected by many people, whether you're thinking about it or not. It just it happens. We're human beings, and we're all under total depravity. We're all totally depraved, utterly depraved in some instances. I could very well have listed all 613 mitzvot, or commandments. That's, that's right, 613 different commandments in the Law of Moses that are broken down into 10 subcategories, which is the 10 actual commandments. Now I will leave the reading to you who have been blessed by this series. Okay, it's all right there. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Whereas in uh, Exodus and Leviticus, those commandments were given at Mount Sinai, and Deuteronomy is a recap right before they are to enter into the promised land. It's important to understand and know the law of Moses so that you can have the ability to understand grace and why grace is grace. Now, to the benefits of remaining obedient to the commandments and the statutes. First, we're going to look again, we're going to define our terms. Okay, we're going to look at the definition for the word commandment. Again, in Webster's 1828 Dictionary, the first definition of the word commandment is obvious. It is a command, a mandate. 
an order or injunction given by authority, charge, or precept. Why do ye transgress the commandment of God? That's Matthew chapter 15. This is the first and great commandment. Matthew chapter 22. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. John chapter 13. Number two. The second definition of the word commandment uh, by way of eminence, or a precept of the Decalogue, or moral law, written on tables of stone at Mount Sinai, or one of the Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 34. Number three, a commandment is its authority, its coercive power. And I do not believe that any definition could be more clear than what has been declared above. Okay, commandments are not suggestions that are arbitrary to the person who looks at them. A commandment is just that, a commandment by an overwhelming authority, the Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, the potter, who makes commands and gives commands to the clay. Now, the benefits are thus, and I'm going to read some of these benefits here. Um, for those of you who can keep up, by all means do so. Uh, those who cannot keep up or who are not able to read your Bibles and are like listening at work or something. Um, again, the notes are available on Sermon Audio in the PDF. You can download them and go along as you, as you need to. Right. Exodus chapter 18, verse 23. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure. And all this people shall also go to their place in peace. In peace. Exodus chapter 20, verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Keeping the commandments will enable God to show mercy to the thousands of them that love him. And again... Like, uh, like at the very beginning of the series, John chapter 14, verse 15, where the Lord Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keeping the commandments is the outward sign and inward sign that you truly love God. Okay? Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. And keeping the commandments of the Lord will make sure that you're fed. He'll make sure that you're not going thirsty. And he'll keep you healthy. He'll keep the sickness away from the midst of you. Leviticus chapter 18 verse 4. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 5. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. He shall live in them. I am the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil the increase of thy kine and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. In other words, he's going to enable you to be prosperous. 
Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people, and there shall not be male or female that are barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all of them that hate thee. Okay, those verses were Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 12 through 15. Now I'm going to read to you Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 8 through 15. Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong, and go in and possess the land, whither ye go to possess it, and that ye may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord sware unto your fathers to give unto them and to their seed a land that floweth with milk and honey. For the land, whither thou goest in to possess it, is not as the land of Egypt, from whence he came out, where thou sowedst thy seed, and wateredst it with thy foot, as a garden of herbs. But the land, whither ye go to possess it, is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. A land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it, from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart, and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. And I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. In other words, he's talking about material prosperity, which in those days was the ability to grow your food, your animals, which were your value, your worth, that's what made you rich, your lands and your flocks. Okay. Okay, the last portion I'm going to read with regard to blessings is going to be Deuteronomy chapter 28. I know most of you are probably familiar with Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 through 14. Okay, and I will read them again. So bear with me. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And I'm going to stop just for a second there, and to show you that the Lord is saying the same thing over and over again. In Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, three different places, four different places, five different places, Okay, the Lord is telling you the same thing. If you obey my commandments, if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, as in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, and to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Okay? Now, to finish Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 through 14, and verse 2, and all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, which in this case, the voice of God is our Bible. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, that is your children and the fruit of thy ground, that is your crops, and the fruit of thy cattle, that is your livestock, in the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Again, this was, their, this was their wealth, their animals. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed 
shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee, that's run away, before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in other words, plenty in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open up unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to not only observe, but to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. And thus, these are the blessings that the Lord thy God will bless you with if you diligently observe and keep his commandments. In this case, nowadays, it's the moral law, as the ceremonial law was fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, to the second part of the sermon. Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 14. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, that you break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. This is after the giving of all the commandments in Leviticus. Okay? Lest you be left with only a portion of all that God has said, leaving you blind and ignorant of the curses for not keeping his commandments, which again in this case is not being obedient to the moral law, which I have given you, as the Lord gave his people and us, who are his people, to continue in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 15, part B, I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you and shall reign over you. Or they that hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues you. 
And if you will not set for all this, hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. And I will break the pride of your power. And I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And if you walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children, and destroy your cattle, and make you few in number and your highways shall be desolate. And if you will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you, that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant." And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then will I walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters shall you eat. And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols. And my soul shall abhor you. And I will make your cities waste, and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. And I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you. And your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths, as long as it lieth desolate. And ye be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest. Because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when ye dwelt upon it. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth. And they shall fall one upon another as it were before a sword, when none pursueth, and ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies, and ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands. And also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. Well, that's a lot. That's all right there in Leviticus chapter 26. Okay? Chapter 26, verse 15 all the way to verse 39. That's a lot. But there's more. A lot more. 
I know most of you have heard, and again, this part that I'm, I'm ad-libbing now, it's not in the notes, but there are most of you who have always heard Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. That is all the blessings, because everything in the modern church is about blessings. Most, play, most churches that I'm aware of, that I've been in long before now, never taught any, never taught about sin. They never taught about the curses that will fall upon us if we don't obey. And again, I'm not talking about the ceremonial law, the feasts, and the animal sacrifices, and that business. That's all been fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? But as far as the moral law is concerned, these curses still apply. As you can see now in our own nation, in the year 2020, and what's going on in our country now. I'm sure most of you have already pieced it together. But for those of you who have not still woken up and are understanding why this is happening to us, I'm going to read to you all the curses now in Deuteronomy chapter 28. The part that maybe some of you have not heard yet. And if you were frightened at what I just read in Leviticus chapter 26, you're going to be trembling after what I read to you in Deuteronomy chapter 28, starting in verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And before I finish, these curses actually did come to pass, all of them. They were fulfilled upon the Jews after the destruction of the temple in 70 AD all the way up to the siege at Masada in uh, 73 and 74 AD. And again, I would encourage you to look them up. I'll be mentioning them again in next week's sermon. Okay, But now back to this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Cursed shall be thou in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shall thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of the land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. This is all talking about the material prosperity. He's going to curse all of it. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he have consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with a sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them, and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And thy carcass, your carcass, shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air, and unto the beast of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. The Lord will smite you with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds, in other words, hemorrhoids, and with the scab 
and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. The Lord shall smite you with madness, insanity, and blindness and astonishment of heart. And you shall grope at noonday, as the blind gropeth in the darkness. And you shall not prosper in your ways, and you shall be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. You shall betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. You shall build a house, and you shall not dwell therein. You shall plant a vineyard, and shall not gather the grapes thereof. Your ox shall be slain before your eyes, and you shall not eat thereof. Your ass, or your donkey, shall be violently taken away from before your face, and shall not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given unto your enemies, and you shall have no one to rescue them. Your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people, and your eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in your hand. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 33. The fruit of your land and all your labors shall a nation which you know not eat up, and you shall be only oppressed and crushed always, so that you shall be mad, that is crazy or insane. You shall be mad for the sight of your eyes, which you shall not see, or which you shall see. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of your head. The Lord shall bring you and your king which you shall set over you unto a nation which neither you nor your fathers have known. And there shall you serve other gods, wood and stone. And you shall become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations where the Lord shall lead you. And before I continue in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 38, remember last week's message where I showed you that the children of Israel and the Israel of God are the same. Now this is, does not mean that you're going to lose your salvation as the Israel of God, because that's not possible. What it does mean, though, is that your life is going to be pretty, pretty tough. Pretty tough. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 38. You shall carry much seed out into the field, and shall gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. You shall plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes. For the worms shall eat them. You shall have olive trees throughout all your coasts, but you shall not anoint yourself with the oil, for your olive shall cast his fruit. You shall beget sons and daughters, but you shall not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. All your trees and fruit of your land shall the locust consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above you very high, and you shall come down very low. He shall lend to you, and you shall not lend to him, and he shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till you be destroyed. Because you did not listen unto the voice of the Lord your God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded you. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 46. 
and they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder and upon your seed forever. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shall you serve your enemies which the Lord shall send against you in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and lacking in all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he has destroyed you. The Lord shall bring a nation against you from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue you shall not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. This is a prophecy about the Romans. And he shall eat the fruit of your cattle, and the fruit of your land until you be destroyed, which also shall not leave you either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of your kind, or flocks of your sheep, until he have destroyed you. And he shall besiege you in all your gates, until your high and fenced walls come down, destruction of the temple in 70 AD, wherein you trusted, and throughout all your land, and he shall besiege you in all your gates throughout all your land, which the Lord thy God hath given you. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, as happened at Masada, the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters, which the Lord your God hath given you in the siege, that is the siege of Masada and in the straightness wherewith your enemies shall distress you. We're not done, folks. We're not done. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you, and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother, and toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he hath nothing left him in the siege. And the straightness wherewith your enemies shall distress you in all your gates. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet and toward her children which she shall bear for she shall eat them for lack of of all things secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sickness, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude. In other words, they couldn't be counted. 
because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to nothing. And you shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from one end of the earth even unto the other. And there you shall serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And your life shall hang in doubt before you, and you shall fear day and night, and shall have no assurance of your life. In the morning you shall say, Would God it were evening, and at evening you shall say, Would God it were morning, for the fear of your heart wherewith you shall fear, and for the sight of your eyes which you shall see. And the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again, that is into bondage, with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. You shall see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies, or bondmen and bondwomen, that is slaves, and no man shall buy you. That was all Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 through 68. And I want you to I really want you to consider this for a minute, brethren. 14 verses of blessings. The remainder of curses. The weight of the curses far outweigh the weight of the blessings by a long shot. Okay? In case you are still not convinced. Because some of you may say to yourselves, well, I'm a Christian. I made my decision. I, I, I have faith. I can do what I want. I'll do what I want. Okay? If you're still not convinced and you still will not allow this to, to, to penetrate you, okay? Here's some more for you. Four more verses. Okay, I'm only going to read four more verses because, I mean, I, I'll explain it in a minute, okay? Four more verses. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 19 through 22. But if you turn away... And forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Then I will pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, and this house, which I have sanctified for my name, which is the temple. And I will cast out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all the nations, which again it has done. Temple's gone. Mosaic economy's gone. It's been so for 1,000, over 1,900 years. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passes by it, so that he shall say, Why has the Lord done this unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered, Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods and worshipped them and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. And like I said before, there's much, much more of this in the books of the prophets, the major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel in much more detail to what happened to them. And we know from history this is exactly what happened. And the Lord doesn't change. Okay? 
If I were to list all the judgments of the Lord against those who rebel against his commandments and ignore his statutes, I would be here reading to you for hours upon hours. Hours upon hours. Okay, I have one final note to convey to you. Do not be fooled into thinking, oh, I have common grace. Okay, and the common grace is my assurance that I'm walking right with God, or else I wouldn't have so much prosperity. Okay, this is deception at its finest. Now, here is what common grace is in a nutshell. Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. God allows wicked men to prosper as well as the righteous. Here's a couple of examples. Ishmael begat twelve princes, and was prosperous. Esau, the same. Same with the children of the land of Canaan before they were utterly destroyed in the time of Joshua. They had prosperity, they had food, they had wealth, they had all of it, and God still destroyed them. Okay? And even in our day, the wicked this wicked and adulterous generation have much prosperity. Okay, and again, next Sabbath sermon is going to be on prosperity. And we're going to continue along in the same vein. Okay, don't be fooled. Now, like I said before, the ceremonial portion of the law has been fulfilled. The kashrut, or the kosher laws, have also been undone. The Lord said to Peter that kill, right, rise, kill, and eat. So that way he could minister to the Gentiles. So the kosher laws don't have any real bearing on us either. Now actually being kosher, eating kosher is healthier for your body than not. But again, it's not one of those things that's going to cause you to be cut off. Okay? And the Lord Jesus Christ declared these to be true when he said it is finished. The work of redemption was finished. The ceremonial law, which pointed to the coming of Christ, was fulfilled. The moral law will exist until all men are gone from this world. As long as people are still here, the moral law is going to exist. Okay, and, I, and I'll explain that in just a second, because I started this series out with these two verses that I'm going to read to you again. Okay, the moral law will always exist. The judicial law, because there are three types of law, ceremonial, moral, and judicial. Okay, the judicial law will remain until all have been judged and sentenced. And again, as was stated in the first sermon of this series, Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, verily means truthfully, till heaven and earth pass, which it has not passed, we're all still here, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all, be fulfilled. The moral law still remains among us. We are still to keep it. Now again, like I said before, God's elect are God's elect. They're saved whether they break the moral law or not, but the, the, the regenerate are not going to viciously and willfully break the moral law. They're not going to violate it because they want to please God. Okay, but for those who call yourselves Christians and are not, who have not been regenerated, but have trusted in a decision, you need to take these sermons that I've given you very seriously. Because these, these curses will fall upon you. 
They won't fall upon the elect. The elect are going to suffer anyway. Their lives will be made difficult, okay? But they will not be condemned under the law. And like I've said all along, those who love the Lord Jesus Christ keep his commandments. And so it shall be done. Let us pray. I thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for your law and the blessings that you have promised for those that keep your commandments and for also showing mercy to us by showing us the curses for those who willfully disobey. I thank you for granting us the opportunity to hear all these things again. May your mercy be upon us all. In Jesus' name, amen.